Hi everybody, David Harper here, and this is my painting, my interpretation of locomotion number one. That famous loco designed and built by George Stevenson that in 1825 was the very first loco, first train ever in the world to pull a carriage of passengers. This was along the Stockton to Darlington railway line in the northeast of England. So the loco was ordered, uh, specced by the Stockton and Darlington railway line. And coincidentally, 200 years later, the new Stockton and Darlington railway company have commissioned me to paint my interpretation of the loco number one. So take a few minutes out, jump on board, and let's go on a little journey, first of all, around the painting itself, then some background information on loco number one and the fascinating character, George Stevenson. So let's start with the painting itself, first of all. So I've painted it on canvas, a nice deep edged canvas. I haven't primed it, that is just the raw canvas I've simply painted in that center section. And as you can see, I've painted it very thickly using a multitude of colors, that's the way I paint. So there is my interpretation of locomotion number one. Now, let's move on to the interesting character of George Stevenson. Now, I'm sure you've heard of him, he's almost a household name, but I bet you didn't know that George Stevenson, the world's, probably the world's most famous engineer, couldn't read or write until he was 18 years old. You just wouldn't believe it. When you see a picture of George Stevenson, here he is in later life, rich, successful and famous. But it certainly wasn't always like that. George Stevenson was born into a very poor family just outside of Newcastle. Didn't go to school one day in his life. He got a job, the local pit, the coal mine, labouring, digging out coal and later fixing engines. He was discovered as a natural engineer and it was only at the age of 17 or 18 that he went to night school to learn to read, write and a little bit of basic arithmetic. But fast forward a few years, George Stevenson proved that not only could he fix machinery in the pits, he redesigned them when he fixed them and reinvented them. And it didn't take very long for Stevenson's reputation as an engineering genius to spread far and wide. Every pit owner wanted him. He designed the money-saving contraptions. A few years later, he came up with this machine, locomotion number one. And it was a beast in a very good way. This in 1825, made out of timber and cast iron, was space age technology. It was so powerful, it was unbelievable. People traveled from miles around just to see it and hear it because it also sounded like a beast. But it could travel at 15 miles an hour, which was pretty good going in 1825. A horse and carriage could travel about that kind of speed at full pelt, but this thing could go all day long. But not only that, it hauled, it pulled dozens of wagons full of coal and of course the passenger wagons as well. It was rocket science of 1825. And this is, you know, the early days of the Industrial Revolution founded here in Britain. And as revolutions go, the industrial one was a very good one. It spread around the world, bringing opportunities, wealth, health, longer life and happier lives. And George Stevenson was instrumental in the Industrial Revolution by becoming the father of the railways and starting out with locomotion number one. So it's him that we can thank really for our daily commute on trains and planes and automobiles because this is the very early days of motorised transportation. So thanks to George Stevenson, that lad from Newcastle with no formal education whatsoever who got his first job as a labourer in a pit a coal mine. Thanks to him, we had locomotion number one and all the opportunities that we and our ancestors before us have taken for granted. 
So there you have it, George Stevenson, one of my all-time heroes from British history. So thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'm David Harper. Cheerio.